From the far reaches of the Milky Way galaxy, it's Retro Nerd Girl with a film review for you. Today, I will be reviewing the movie, The Day the Earth Stood Still, released in 1951, starring Michael Reaney and Patricia Neal, directed by Robert Wise. A humanoid alien, Klaatu, and his giant eight-foot police robot, Gort, arrive in Washington, D.C. with an important message to the citizens of planet Earth not to engage in atomic wars and make peace with one another. My rating is a 9.4. I initially wanted to do this without spoilers, but then I realized that the synopsis for the story is a spoiler within itself. I remember watching this when I was a little girl. Uh, it was a late night TV show uh, that played movies on, I guess, TMC or one of those channels. And they showed the trailer first, which really doesn't give you an idea of what is going to happen in the film. And then they showed the movie. So I had no idea what the big deal was about this movie or what the premise was really. It just an alien shows up and scares the heck out of everyone. So in the light of that, I'll just go on ahead and reveal more spoilers because then it can really, uh, we can have a discussion about the movie and you can tell me if you like it or not. The Day the Earth Stood Still is one of my favorite movies. It's one of my favorite black and white movies and it's, it's beautifully told. This movie is closely based on a short story, Farewell to the Master, utilizing the robot uh, as one of the main characters. The title of the movie, The Day the Earth Stood Still, refers to a major event in the film that takes place about halfway in. The alien Klaatu, seeking to get an audience with the leaders of the world, brings the planet to a standstill by disabling global electricity. Not even cars can move, and the only electrical power that doesn't shut off are those that would endanger lives, like planes in the air and hospitals. The Day the Earth Stood Still was a great social commentary for its time, being released just six years after the atomic bombing in 1945. There was a lot of distrust between countries, and this political state of affairs was interwoven into the film. One of the things right at the beginning is that Klaatu asks to see the world leaders. And even though he's an alien from another world, and everyone would love to know more about, you know, would love to know about the alien, dissect him possibly. <laughs> um, he's actually told that, you know, the world leaders would never meet, ever. And that kind of sets the pace for the rest of the movie. Klaatu is actually a fascinating character. He's smart, he's wise, he's gentle, a very upstanding kind of guy. But he lies. He, he lies a lot. And he lies only because he's willing to do anything to achieve his goal. He assesses the earthlings rather quickly, realizing that he can't use a simple approach with them. He has to be clever and uses this to make his message heard ultimately. Klaatu meets Helen while he's hiding out at a boarding house. Her son Bobby becomes good friends with him. The best part of this movie, hands down, I believe everyone will agree with me, is Klaatu's monologue at the end of the movie. He manages to get his audience with all the world scientists instead of the leaders because ultimately the scientists are the ones working on creating the bombs and all of them uh, futuristic weapons. So he feels if he can contact them, he'll be able to reach the rest of the world. And then he explains that Gort is actually a robot policeman. They police the galaxy watching Earthlings. And if we pursue more atomic aggression, the planet will be destroyed. It's sort of like a tough love in a way. Just watching it is just um, sort of puts a tear in your eye or makes you just say, well, we are destroying our world with violence. And it's not just for 1951. It actually applies to today's society. Uh, we still have wars and we still are aggressively hurting each other. And it would, I mean, I, I know it sounds like a utopian world, but wouldn't it nice if we just all got 
catalog. <laughs> um, it, it's part of that idealistic, futuristic world that we all want, this utopia. May not, it may never happen, but uh, it's sure nice wishing. Um, and this movie kind of makes you think about that a little bit. I think the worst part of the movie, which is if you really have to pick apart this movie and and find a bad flaw in it, there's a few moments in the movie that are really pandering to the studio. And one is the scene where Helen meets Gort for the first time. Uh, the propaganda for the movie was a, a basically a woman being carried off by a robot. And in some of the posters, she's even a blonde. So it just really plays into the audience they were trying to pull into the, the theaters or the drive-ins to see this movie. You know, that scene just doesn't work because from everything we know about Helen up until this point, she's strong, she's independent, and she pretty much knows what she's getting into when she goes to see Gort for the first time. So why would she freak out screaming and being all like weird? I mean, it just didn't make sense. There's also a connection to Christ. It was supposed to be very subtle, but I think a lot of people picked up on it. It was definitely something that was required by a studio exec who wanted a specific thing in the movie. It's prevalent um, in the fact that Kalatu's name that he assumes is carpenter, which Jesus was a carpenter, and Kalatu's also resurrected from the dead in this movie. <laughs> and then right after that, he refers to, uh, quote unquote, the Almighty. The ending is actually really good. I, as I told you, there's that, that big monologue that's absolutely beautifully written, beautifully acted, and performed. It is, it, and it's also a beautiful spectacle in the movie. Um, and it leaves you with the question whether or not mankind has actually taken heed to Klaatu's words. It doesn't answer that for you. And I think that makes you uh, actually part of the conversation, right? Now it's up to you. It's up to me. It's up to us to make peace with one another. That was a very poignant moment to end the story exactly then because it, it makes you become part of the story. And it's not just um, entertainment, it becomes interactive, which I love about this movie. My enjoyment, um, I enjoyed it immensely. This is a great film for kids, even the very young at heart to see this film. I feel as if adults seeing this for the first time might not get the awesomeness of it because they've probably seen many movies that have used this movie as its inspiration. If you're in an open mind to accept something interesting and you know from the past and, and appreciate the hard work it took to make all of the elements happen in this movie, I think you'll love you'll love this movie. The pacing is pretty good in my opinion. There are a couple of places that seem slow, but I've been watching a lot of recent movies that have about the same pacing, so it's not exceptionally slow for its time either. I just remember there, you know, there isn't a whole lot of action scenes. You really need to focus in on what is happening in front of you on screen. And it's not too hard because, you know, the music will help to get you in the mood and it's you know, there's lots of play on shadows and stuff like that. So it, it's a very engaging film. It will keep your attention the whole time. Um, the story itself, I, um, the story is excellently crafted in my opinion. It doesn't tell you too much about Klaatu's world, but just enough uh, for you to know that it's more advanced. You know, um, he comes from a peaceful world that is policed by robots. They use diamonds as currency. People live to 130. The trains run without tracks. Those, that's really, you know, awesome stuff. That's about all you really get out of this movie. Um, and you don't need more. Uh, the challenge in this situation would be, I guess, the situation of being an alien in a foreign or in a, another planet. And the Earthlings here really pose as the real threat 
So they will be the challenge, the villains in this case. They are suspicious and, you know, basically they're more about like, shoot first, ask questions later. <laughs> if this really happened in real life, would all the leaders of the world refuse to meet with an alien who claims to have an important message for us? Um, who knows? I love the way the scenario is played out on camera and it leaves a lot to your imagination. For me, I cared about Kalatu right away. Uh, he's pretty much attacked as soon as he left the spaceship and no one would grant him an audience that he requested. He was a likable guy and you really were pulling for him throughout the entire film. This movie wins very high points for technicality for me. The spaceship design initially looks like nothing special, but the way the doors kind of open spectacularly really takes you by surprise. Actually, this could not be achieved today except with the use of CGI. I think our cameras today would pick up every detail of that ship and it would probably make it, it wouldn't look as smooth and beautiful. Um, but in the black and white and in, in, in the way it was shot, it looks absolutely, I buy it. I buy it even today. It looks really great. Um, the special effects, some of the special effects were kind of dated, but still pretty great for back then. And I, I, I enjoyed it a lot. The interior of the ship was absolutely gorgeous. Um, and, and I just love the detail of uh, Kalatu just waving his hand in front of the mechanics and, and things turning on. I was like, wow, that's pretty cool. I, I think this was a really great production for its time. I mean, uh, a million bucks, that's a lot for a movie at this, at this time. Um, the title sequence opening is actually very eye-catching. The lettering has been copied to death. And one of the most brilliant things about the movie is the music by Bernard Herrmann. It's eerie and spooky, really setting the tone for the mystery behind the alien visit, driving a lot of fear and suspense. Uh, for performances, these are great performances from Michael Rainey. Oh, he really nails it with that character and He's just graceful and he's confident and his, just his demeanor is so captivating on screen. And you just sort of like, you buy him as this alien who is advanced from another world. Uh, the other ac actors um, were excellent, especially Patricia Neal. Um, I love her voice. I love the way she carries herself. She's a strong woman. She has that very, um, like a stoic um, demeanor, even though she's not very old in this way, I think she's like in her 20s. She just carries herself like a mature woman. And um, I, I, I just, I just love her character. She's, she was great in this movie. And that pretty much sums up my review. <laughs> I hope you liked it. And please make sure to subscribe to this channel. I'll be posting many more reviews. And let's keep the discussion going. Leave your rating for the movie and why in the comment section. Take care, movie lovers. I'm off to my next review.